The last Romanovs are very famous. There was the unfortunate Tsar, Nicholas II, his beloved wife, Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna, and their five young children. Alexandra Fyodorovna never always went by that name, and their children may not have existed if events hadn't played out the way they did. Alex of Hesse and Byrine was a favorite granddaughter of Queen Victoria. She was the daughter of Princess Alice, who had died when Alex was very young. So the queen took Alex and her siblings under her wing, and they spent most of their time in England visiting their grandmother. As she grew, the queen thought that another of her grandsons, Albert Victor, who was expected to someday become King of England, would be a great husband for Alex. Spoiler, they never married and Albert Victor died before his chance to become King. Alex's sister, Ella, married Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich. Alex went to her sister's wedding. Also attending was a relative of Sergei's, Tsarevich Nicholas. He was the son of Tsar Alexander III of Russia and Alex's aunt by marriage, Empress Maria Fyodorovna. He and Alex hit it off. They had many, many shared cousins, so they were able to meet again a decade later at the wedding of Alex's brother, Ernst Louis, to a cousin of both of theirs, Victoria Melida of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. At that time, in 1894, Tsar Alexander III was in ill health. For a very long time now, Nicholas had wanted to marry Alex but his parents thought that she was too insignificant of a princess to marry the future ruler of one-sixth of the world. Some didn't want them to marry because they were very closely related. Nicholas was insistent that he had to marry Alex, so Tsar Alexander agreed as he felt his death drawing near. Queen Victoria was not amused. She was concerned about the political situation in Russia, namely all the assassination attempts on the royal family. The royals had dodged assassination by being late to dinner once and by having the very strong Tsar with them to hold up the roof of a train while the family escaped, among many other occasions. Victoria feared for the safety of her favorite granddaughter, but Nicholas had his parents' permission, so he proposed at Victoria Melida and Ernst Louis' wedding. Initially, Alex rejected him. She was a devout Lutheran, and marrying the future Tsar meant that she would have to convert to Russian Orthodoxy. Her sister Ella had voluntarily converted, and was eager for the match to go ahead, so she persuaded Alex to convert. Queen Victoria and Kaiser Wilhelm II also did some persuading, and also convinced Nicholas to propose again, and this time, Alex agreed to convert and marry Nicholas. She took the Russian name Alexandra, but she also needed a patronymic. She couldn't make a great one with her father's name, so she took the name most foreign Russian brides, including her sister, had taken, Fyodrovna. Tsar Alexander also gave her his blessing on his deathbed. As the country was in mourning for the dead Tsar, and also because Nicholas wanted to be married immediately, the wedding couldn't be as grand of an affair as it might have been in different circumstances. On November 26, 1894, the wedding took place. Nicholas wrote in his journal, The day of my wedding. Everyone had coffee together, then went off to dress. I put on the hussar uniform and at 11.30, drove with Misha to the Winter Palace. The whole Nevsky was lined with troops waiting for Mama to drive past with Alex. There were so many people on the streets, it was almost impossible to pass. Alex wore a lace veil designed by Prince Albert, her grandfather, which her mother and older sisters had also worn to their weddings. She wore a 475 carat matching necklace and earrings that had belonged to Catherine the Great, along with the Romanov imperial nuptial crown. She also wore the star and sash of the Order of Saint Andre. It took the bride hours to dress in her intricate gown. The female guests wore their court dresses, while the men wore their formal attire and military uniforms. Among the guests were the King of Denmark and the King and Queen of Greece. Queen Victoria desperately wanted to be at the wedding, but was unable to come and was so sad I could not be with her favorite granddaughter. Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna led the procession into the church at around noon. Nicholas and Alex exchanged rings three times, then knelt to exchange vows, while their cousins, Grand Duke Mikhail, Grand Duke Cyril Vladimirovich, Grand Duke Sergei Mikhailovich, and Prince George of Greece held the nuptial crowns over their heads. Once they knelt and kissed the gold cross, they were pronounced married. Church bells rang and guns were fired to honor the new Tsar and Tsarina. 
There was no reception or honeymoon since the court was still in mourning for Tsar Alexander. The mourning had only eased a little for the wedding, but Alex still felt the general air of sadness and said that what was supposed to be the happiest day of her life seemed like it was simply part of the funeral preparations going on before her wedding. She and Nicholas would go on to have four daughters and one son before their and their predecessors' many mistakes kicked off the Russian Revolution. The entire family was gunned down in a basement. 